Jim and Pam get therapized. America's sweethearts, they were such a perfect couple. But then their marriage almost got destroyed. How would I help them through this crisis? Watch on. All right, so if you're a fan of The Office or just if you lived in the world in the mid-aughts, you know that Jim and Pam were America's sweethearts. They were the perfect couple. Their love story is one for the ages. John Krasinski and Jenna Fisher had incredible chemistry together, wonderful couple, and you see this whole story of how Jim's pining for Pam and Pam's engaged to somebody else and he confesses his love for her in that moment that had everybody just holding their collective breaths. I'm in love with you. What? And then of course he tries again and he kisses her. Oh man, this is all great stuff and everybody remembers this. And then of course, you know, she says no, he moves on, and then she has a change of heart and wants him and he's not sure. Well, actually he's always sure in his heart, right? But he's with somebody else and finally... Um, are you free for dinner tonight? Yes. All right, then it's a date. And these are the moments that stick with everybody. They date, they get engaged, Jim proposes at a gas station, which only Jim and Pam could make a proposal at a gas station in the rain into something beautiful, because I can't think of anything more like, oh, tell us your story, mom and dad. Well, dad was coming out with a bag of Doritos and a Pepsi, and he got down on one knee. This is the point where fans slowly started to start dropping out of watching the show every week. Now, many of you know that they got married. You might have stuck around for the wedding. But once Steve Carell left, many people said sayonara to the office, which is a darn shame because one of the most beautiful redemption in marriage arcs in any medium ever happens in the last season of The Office when Jim and Pam, who up till now have been this ideal couple, with nary an argument, a serious argument between them, their marriage is on the rocks. Their marriage is on the rope and it doesn't seem like it's gonna make it. So here's the setup. Jim pursues a dream, right? He wants to work at this other company. He's got this thing that he really wants to do. He's very passionate about. And he starts to neglect his family. He's not home as much. He has to travel a lot. Pam doesn't see him as much. She feels unsupported. She feels alone. Several big things happen in the office. And more than anything, Jim, who has always, and I mean always, been so attentive to her needs, her wants, always tuned into her, he's not there. And I don't just mean not physically present, I mean when she's talking to him on the phone, he's so immersed in his dream that he's not emotionally present, mentally present, relationally present. And she starts to feel like he's not prioritizing her anymore, which is really, really hard for her. And he's just blinded by the dream. He thinks, I can have it all. I can do this, and I can have the family, and I can have the wife. This speaks to me very personally, if I can get real with you for a second. I did this to Alicia for a long time. Uh, where I was so intent on my own dreams and I thought I could have it all, you know, the career, the wife, the kids, the things that I wanted to do, that I stopped paying attention to the little things that she needed to feel loved and secure. And I stopped paying attention and I stopped prioritizing. And I thought that I was working on making her dreams come true, but if I'm being honest about it, I was working on making my dreams come true and what little time there was left might be dedicated to her stuff, but it wasn't enough to really move the needle. So I relate a lot to this story because I was Jim. And so we start to see slowly over, and a lot of people didn't like this as they're watching it, as the episodes roll out one per week. Are you kidding me? It's the last season and we're slowly watching this couple that we love so much drift apart. Is this how The Office is gonna end? And people got mad and they stopped watching and they angry tweeted and all this stuff. But it was building to something wonderful. Now you have to understand, Jim hasn't cheated on Pam. He hasn't been abusive. They've just grown apart. And she's tried to fight for the marriage for a long time and he's not really seen it until she has no fight left in her. And then he sees it. And then he's desperately scrambling, hoping that it's not too late. They go to couples therapy, which is something Jim wasn't willing to do before, but they go and it's awkward. Like a lot of first sessions in couples therapy are and it doesn't go very well. So here's Jim at this point and he's about to leave the office for his other job, which is in another city, this, this dream that he's pursuing. And they've just had a therapy session and it didn't go so great. And he's trying to say goodbye to Pam and then this happens. It's awkward for Jim. You know, this was really weird and it was really hard. But I think we're making progress. So I'm really sorry that I have to go, but let's keep at this, okay? Okay. 
Pam's trying to put on a brave face. But there's no, they don't kiss, they don't hug. The fire's gone out. The desire, I mean, he's trying to connect and I have had that exact moment and then he's gone and she looks to connect. This is bringing up some painful memories for me. <clears throat> so here's Pam, this man that she loved, this marriage that she loved, and he left his umbrella. Jim! But it's not real connection, it's just here's your umbrella and he's like, oh, thanks, and it's not real connection. Weak little kiss, weak little hug. I... Just how much he still wants her and she can't... She doesn't feel it, so she can't do it. Love suffers long and is kind. It is not proud. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, and endures all things. Love never fails. And now these three remain, faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. This doesn't happen to me very much, but that'll get me every time. <clears throat> it got to me before it spoke to me so personally, and now it speaks to me very, very personally that, uh, we can try the things the therapists tell us, and we should, you know, we should work on our skills, our relationships, we can work on making amends and making things right, and making changes, and all these things are important. But it, none of it matters if there's not vulnerability. And honestly, the person who's done the damage <laughs> and should be, should lead the way. Now, sometimes it's not as cut and dry. Here, it's pretty clearly Jim's doing. And in a lot of relationships, it's an escalating war that started small and got bigger and bigger. And then people are either still at war or they're so tired of fighting that they just withdraw. But the fact is, anyone can start the ball rolling. Anyone can be vulnerable. But if Jim hadn't shown that he was willing to work on things, if he hadn't shown that he was willing to go to therapy, be accountable, make changes, then that moment where he hugged her wouldn't have worked. Because to her it's just, well, yeah, that's great that you want to be close to me, that's great that you're wanting to hold me and kiss me, but where's the change? And he had already shown that he was willing to. What I would recommend for them in therapy moving forward from this moment is there's nothing more important than the people that we love. There's nothing more important than the relationships that we cherish. And sometimes we lose sight of that. And it's a very cliched thing to say. Everyone's heard stuff like this, everyone knows this. But when you actually live it, when you actually get so wrapped up in something that matters a lot to you, that you let other things matter less and you've got them switched, you just hope it's not too late and that you wake up in time to make things right. If you're watching this, I mean, the advice I give Jim and Pam is the same advice I give you. Be accountable, be vulnerable, be real and be willing to suffer long, be willing to be patient, to bear all things, to hope all things, be willing to endure, well, not everything, I don't want you to endure abuse or anything like that, but be willing to endure the weaknesses of your partner, be willing to endure what it takes for them to grow, and then you can ask the same of them. I love this. I stopped watching after Steve Carell left, and then once The Office was, if you remember when it was on Netflix, I'm like, okay, fine, now that I don't have to wait every week, I'll go ahead and binge the rest of this and finish it, and this was just incredibly powerful and well done. Sometimes relationships don't make it, and you learn painful, painful lessons, and you wish you could have saved them. But more often than we realize, they can not only be salvaged, they can be brought back to life like we saw here, they can thrive again if we will just be humble, if we will just be accountable, and if we will just actually make the changes that we need to make for our partner to feel safe, respected, and loved. 
Now, if you enjoyed this Get Therapized video, I like to break down pop culture and the relationships and things like that. I'd like to direct you to The Dark Knight Gets Therapized, very different from Jim and Pam, <laughs> but we talk about The Dark Knight Rises and what we do with fear and how we can turn fear into our allies. So check that out. Uh, if you enjoy this, please like, subscribe, click the bell to make sure you get notified every time we have a new video. And the thing that would matter most to me personally is if you would pass this along, if you would share it. Uh, there are a lot of people who need it and you can be the one who delivers it to their door or their inbox, as it were. As always, keep shining. We need your light. I'm Jonathan Decker, and I'll see you next time. na 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 video. Click on it. It's Batman. I'm Batman.